worked in counterintelligence in the state of New Jersey, and you have been with us on many occasions, unfortunately, for these things. Today, though, good news. Uh, none of these devices has exploded. No injuries at all. And they have a suspect in all of this. Yes, and I'll build a little timeline for you. Uh, President Trump's quick decision to mobilize <clears throat> the full weight of the U.S. government's law enforcement agencies resulted in what we have today, and I'll, I'll tell you why. He mobilized the ATF, the FBI, military mm. intelligence agencies, local, state, and county law enforcement. So when Catherine Harris said it was a rapid response, and right. very rapid, uh, all these agencies were brought together, and all of these experts were able to use their skills and talents to bring where we are today. I know that you are a member of the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force. That's one of the reasons that we always bring you on in these situations and talk to you about this. And you have a lot of insight. Um, looking at what we know so far in terms of the devices, seeing the van being driven away, do you think that there's one person behind this? Or, or what does it, could, could one person have done all this? What's, what's the likely profile generally? I believe that this is one person. I believe that because of the quickness of these uh, uh, devices that were mailed, he could have had them piled up mm -hmm. and every day mail one, mail another, mail another, and just mm -hmm. a crazed individual uh, who decided to take this action for whatever reason. And believe me, the motive is gonna be very important. Police are gonna try to find the motive uh, from this individual, but I believe it's one person. And by the way, they're rudimentary devices. They were never meant to blow up. Uh, it was meant to instill fear. Uh, in, well, wait a minute. All of us. But, but the new reporting <laughs> from Catherine is that they were dangerous and unstable. So yeah, maybe I, they, but they could blow up, I guess is the point. Well, well uh, always uh, err on the side of caution. If the law enforcement agents that were on this scene believe that there's a possibility that something could happen, let's err on the side of safety. So that's why they say it's, it, it was unstable. All right. We are uh, all checking our devices right now. Uh, we are still working to confirm, always most comfortable with three sources, but we've got two on the name. A uh, second federal source identifying suspected arrested uh, as Caesar Sayoc of Aventura, Florida. Um, Melissa, as we look at this, and, mm -hmm. and you and I have been looking at notes for about an hour now because they've been coming in. We've been waiting for a triangulation of confirmation. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is a source, a singular source close to the White House first, and, and now a source at the federal level uh, saying that Caesar Sayoc, 56 years old, as Catherine Herridge was telling us, known to authorities. Why is that component so important at this point? Very important. And th that information that the police had on him may have led them to him because he had to be mm -hmm. in a data bank. He had to be somewhere right. in the police department's radar. So maybe in the past he was arrested for terrorist threats. threats. Maybe in the past he had something to do with devices. But that's why uh, right. it is very, very important very important component. In fact, Catherine said that he did have a history of terroristic threats. Um, how, do you, how do you define that in general? Well, see what he did with these uh, bomb devices? That's mm -hmm. terroristic threats. He could have had a history of doing uh, things like this, uh, arrested, maybe served some time, we'll find out a lot about him, and then of course uh, released. But mm -hmm. you define a, a person who commits terroristic threats who commit acts of terror like this. Yeah. And even a threat, a verbal threat, if a person believes that this individual is going to kill you or harm you, uh, uh, you charge him with terroristic threats. So he, he's, uh, he was on their radar. And, and obviously the biggest concern right now would be, are there more devices out there? I mean, that would, that would be the value of interviewing him immediately and trying to figure that out. Um, what do you think are the odds of that? And, and how do we know for sure? Well, well, we won't know for sure, but I'm sure we're going to know tomorrow or the next day, because if he if he did have more devices and he believed that the police were getting closer, he could have dumped in the mail right before uh, the police arrived on the scene. We, we have and, and ho you know, we will be able to look at things before we can necessarily share them without attribution to our audience. But just from from what we're knowing about him, uh, his connections to the northern part of the East Coast is interesting, too, because of your background. We saw that NYPD jacket on the ground, so we knew that there were people from this area, this metro area, who had gone down. Would it necessarily be that he lived in New York to get that kind of, or, or is it because some of these packages went to New York? Well, no, it could be. It, look, at he could have traveled to New York and traveled okay. back to Florida. We just don't know. Uh, but the point is, is that uh, the police uh, are certainly going to ask those questions yeah. and they're going to do a lot of uh, investigating on his I'm going to put you on hold for a quick second because Catherine Harridge has some